again, I should have possibly just stop. Mm -hmm. Sanjay, you were wondering, if someone doesn't yet have a guru to teach them Jyotish, how should they get started? Uh, guru as such means anyone or anything which removes the darkness of ignorance. In the West, there is a concept that guru must only be a living human being, which is not really, really right. The guru is a book. The guru knowledge. The person who carries the knowledge is called a guru for he is carrying the knowledge in his head. So, as I say, you know that all charts have a Jupiter. And if all charts have a Jupiter, so everybody has a guru. That guru is already there in your chart from the day you were born. And what you are looking for is a human being who already has this knowledge in his head. You, when you mentally accept somebody as a teacher, a guru, then only will the knowledge flow towards you. Water always flows from a higher level to a lower level. For that, you have to accept that you are at a lower level. When that acceptance comes in the student that I do not have this knowledge, and I go to the knowledge, then that knowledge will flow to you. Then when you start learning, it's like learning A, B, C, D. You really don't need a PhD scholar teaching you A, B, C, D. You go to a school like so many other students and you learn your A, B, C, D, you learn your language, you learn your various subjects. A stage comes in life where you are now ready for that level of Jyotish, which is called the classical top levels, like let us say you want to now study Parashastra, Parashara Horashastra. Parashara Horashastra is not the beginning of Jyotish really. Parashara Horashastra has to do with a slightly more advanced level, not a beginner's level. At that point of time, you could consider taking a Jyotish guru to walk you through the course. And that is how the first guru comes into a very high PhD level. Like the Germany Sutras. These are sutras. For which you need maybe a higher level Jyotish Guru. So you seek the permission. And basically the contact of such a higher level Guru. From your first Guru. And then go to him. And learn. So gurus will come one after the other and teach you. If you have the ankar, the ego, to believe that you have the knowledge, that means it's tilted the other way. Mm. The water is flowing away from you. It's not flowing towards you. It is your own ego which is chasing the knowledge away. That is how we have a Jyotish Guru and we gain some knowledge from the Jyotish Guru. The Guru is the same for all students. It is the individual student level of Ankar that decides whether you really get the knowledge or you do not get the knowledge. Hello. But the question is, is there something that in your chart, whether it's a yoga teacher or a spiritual guru or a Jyotish guru, <coughs> is it something in the chart that will point to the master coming to you? For example, yes, that is true. Also levels of Jyotish. Levels of Jyotish is what we are talking about. Are we talking about Vedic astrology at the level of the 5th grade, 10th grade? Or are we talking about Vedic astrology at the level of a PhD scholar? What we call the Jainan scholar program. It's like a PhD scholar program. Right, so, so when we are talking of levels, we have different levels of knowledge and we say one is a body level knowledge. That is, there is a mind level knowledge where you are playing with things at the head to understand the logic behind things happening. And then there is a supreme level which we call the soul level where the knowledge is just expanding inside you. So for the body level, we look at what is Lagna or the first house. And from there we look at yogas which will give you this knowledge. And there are yogas 
which can give you this knowledge and for that we need a yoga of the sun. Unless there is a yoga of the sun or a yoga of the eyes, you see we say that Jyotish is the Chakshu or the eyes of the Vedas. Now in Vedic astrology we know that the eyes relate to the 10th house. So unless there is a yoga which is giving the knowledge of the eyes, Vedic eye to you, it doesn't show getting that knowledge very well at the body level. Then we go to the mind. There are yogas which will show getting this knowledge at a mental level. Where we are talking is, you are talking about yogas, the combination, deciding what is right, wrong, working with a teacher who is guiding you through the nuances. You are working very hard, making notes. That is the second level. There are yogas for that. And finally, the topmost level, I say, is, is it coming from the soul? Do you have a strong enough desire from your soul? Because if you have that, you can continue Vedic astrology, maybe 20 years, 40 years, it can become your life path. Now, we know that this is a knowledge of the sun god. And the sun god has his natural house in Leo, which is the fifth house of the natural zodiac and a desire as a function for any planet or anything has to do with the opposite, the seventh house. So if my soul has a link to the eleventh house, then the knowledge should be in the opposite. My desire should be in the opposite. So if the Atma Karaka has an association with the eleventh house or is in the eleventh house, then naturally it will push you towards the fifth house to get that knowledge. Your desire will be on the fifth house. So long time back when people ask me, what is the sign that will show somebody learning Germany? And I gave a very small dictum. The Atma Karaka must be associated with the eleventh house. I said, try it out on the charts and tell me whether I'm wrong. They were surprised. They said, no, 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 this is wrong. I said, but they should try it. When they tried it, they were surprised. It was there in Kienbrau's chart also. It was there. It is there in all charts. of you cannot become a Jyotishi at that level if your soul is not dedicated to the knowledge. If that is not what your soul is seeking. Full statement I read. Every sinner has a future as every saint had a past. There is no saint who doesn't have a past, nor is there any sinner in this planet who doesn't have a future. That is the whole concept behind rebirth and reincarnations. Why do we? Why are we born again? If you talk of rebirth, why? Let us say there is rebirth. Then why are we being born again? It's a come and play soccer and go away. So essentially we are in the territory of Rahu Ketu, aren't we? When we talk of reincarnating. That is nothing called a territory. <laughs> it's all about, it's all about why are we coming? Why are we coming back? For what purpose? Because there is hope for a better future. There is hope that we can overcome our sins. Give me another opportunity. Here's another opportunity. Do good karmas and overcome your sins. Simple as that. That's why we are being born. If there was no hope, we would not, we would not even have agreed to being born again. Because there is hope, that is why we are being reborn. That is the essence. Rahu, Ketu, this, that, that's, that is the Jyotish aspect of it. That's the mathematical aspect of it, where we are synchronizing stars, star positions and planet positions to what we are talking about. But let's be clear about the theory in the first place. All nine planets are involved in our rebirth. Not just Rahu, Ketu. Right. Religion is a language to talk to God. God is one for all human beings. Yeah. And religions are nothing but different languages to talk to that one God. Now, are you trying to tell me that just because you call bread, bread in English, and I call it roti in Hindi, it's a different thing? No. The thing is the same. Yeah. You see the point here? So, so long as I know what I am asking God, yeah. I will get what I am asking. Uh, let us assume that you don't know any of the languages. 
Are we saying that you cannot address? You can address. And are we saying that some of these Vedic vibrations will not work? They will advantage of Vedic mantra. See, there's a difference between a, a, a prayer from the Rig Veda or a hymn from the Rig Veda and others. Because the Rig Veda is not a Smriti. It is not something which was remembered. It is a Shruti. It is something which was heard. So nobody really knows who first said it. But we know who recorded it. So, for example, the famous mantra, Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam, that was first recorded by Vasishta. And Shiva says that whoever shall be the student of Vasishta, that means whoever shall hear this mantra, will be healed and protected all the time. So an experiment was carried out where, where people uh, who don't even understand, I mean who don't even know that Sanskrit as a language exists, they were terminal patients and uh, some of them, they put headphones and they played the mantra. They started healing. And, and many of them have benefited very much from merely hearing this sound. So there are certain prayers in Vedic which are originally from the Rig Veda. Those are absolutely different from the ones which have come from Smritis. Because those hymns have a different level of power. They have a certain chandas, which means the vibration, which we really don't fully understand. But the way that works is that it works absolute miracle. And it cuts across all languages. Because honestly, Vedic Sanskrit is not fully understood by anybody. So even today on this planet, there are very few who really understand what that means. But it works. That's how it works. Yeah. So there is no restriction. The beauty about a Vedic mantra is there is absolutely no restriction. Anybody can do it. And it will work. Again, the second part is the faith. The lady who is in a semi-conscious state, who can barely even know where she is, and is listening to the mantra playing through a headphone or through a speaker on the side, she doesn't even know. She just thinks it's some sound happening on the roadside. She gets cured. Why do you need belief for it to work? That is my question. People say you don't believe so it's not working. No. When you take a medicine, do you believe that that medicine will cure you? No. You take the medicine because the doctor gave you the medicine. You have belief on the doctor not on the medicine. You see the difference between the two. Here you have come to a Vedic astrologer because you have faith or belief on the Vedic astrologer that he knows his subject and he is giving you some medicine. The belief is with the astrologer. The belief is with the doctor because honestly you don't understand the medicine here or here. So it's the patient's uh, or the or the person's belief in the... In the doctor that cures him. The patient must believe the doctor. In, 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 you know, you know, in the villages of Orissa and in India, sometimes some person comes, you know, you know, they say, I've got a terrible fever, I've got the stomach upset, and this doctor listens to him calmly. He says, you need an injection immediately. He takes distilled water, gives him an injection. The fellow becomes okay next day. What cured him? It was distilled water. Distilled water doesn't cure. It was faith in the doctor. See the point? Human. There is an energy which we don't understand. We call it a psychic energy or word of energy. When you have faith in someone, that faith is faith in God. For God sits in the heart of the doctor. Go to a guru to learn. If you have faith in the guru, you are having faith in God. It is that that teaches you. And it then is, the remedies will start working. Everything will start working. The problem comes when you don't have faith in the teacher or on the doctor. And you are looking for faith in God. You know sometimes I joke with the students. You can't trust a human being. You really think you can trust someone you have never seen? Quality, you would say. Which is... Um, 
not just as uh, learning Jyotish, but as practicing Jyotish, you know, uh, like giving people um, the remedies and w what is that key in a, a technical or where even kind of like on an emotional, psychical level, what is those qualities that you think are, you know, have to be there for a successful Jyotish, um, you know, to heal people, essentially? See, there are two things in Jyotish. One is healing and one is predicting. Yeah. You could be a very good predictor, but you can't heal anybody. You could be a very good healer, but you can't make a single prediction. Or maybe you can do both. You see my point? Yeah. For prediction, you need to be technically very strong. You need to have a very well-grounded system of studying a certain aspect of astrology or Vedic astrology, which focuses in a certain type of prediction. Then your predictions will be right. You may be able to predict the disease of somebody, such and such disease is coming, but you may not be able to heal it. Because to heal, you first need to have faith in your own self. Because God is in your heart. If you don't have faith in yourself, you don't have faith in God. And if you don't have faith in God, your healing powers are absent. Such a faith can only come when you are pure enough. If you are, if you think, if you, see, you can lie to a hundred people. You cannot lie to yourself. A person who's let us say, let us if let us say if you're in your belief systems, we all have belief systems. If in my belief system I believe that consuming alcohol is spiritually not good, let us say I believe. If somebody is taking, it's his problem, not mine. It's his wish. I'm not being judgmental. Whatever you want to do, you do. I'll do what I want to do. If I think that I have, I have faith, let us say in my guru. And my guru says that, look, don't take this because, you know, you lose your spiritual powers. You cannot heal anyone. So having faith in my guru and faith in myself, I don't take that. Then what happens in due course of time is I build my faith in myself. Look, I have not taken that. I am following the rules. I am doing my prayers. That is nothing but faith building. When you do your mantras, you build your spiritual energy. They are like building blocks. Each mantra is an energy, energy packet. I built it up over time. And that plays back on me. Therefore, I will have the faith. So when you give a mantra, that mantra has what we call an energy transmission. It's like shining a torch. You take a little torch and the battery is half dead. Nothing is going to be visible. But if that torch has a battery which is absolutely as powerful as the sun, it cannot fail. So for healing, you need personal spiritual energy. That is the difference. So then that leads me to the other question on karmas. Can the karma can actually be uh, Altered. What what is important? The question you're asking me is basically that can we overcome this karma? It's like this. It's like asking. I'll rephrase the question in a simple way. Can I burn all the trash in this world at one go? Forget about karma. This is a complicated concept. Think of all the trash that is collected in London every day. Can you burn all of it in one go? Some people will say, "Oh my God, that's a impossible task." But some will say. Maybe it can be done. Because there is a possibility it can be done if you have the technology. Yeah. Maybe I have a very powerful laser beam and I can send it over there and it will just burn everything out. Right? So that there, there is a possibility, right? And that shows that yes, all karmas can be burnt in one stroke. And that burning of all karmas in one stroke is what we call the third eye of Shiva. Just as he destroyed Kama Deva, the God, people translate Kama Deva as the God of love. I would look at him as more the God of desire. It is desire that causes rebirth. So if in one stroke, the very root of all desires, what is the root? The Deva. I destroy the, all the, the very root is destroyed. 
From where will desire come? There will be no desire left. That means no more karmas. It is the third eye that can do it. So which part of your body is the third eye? It's the Agya Chakra. Yeah. Keep that in mind. So when you study chakras and when you focus on chakras, focus on the Agya Chakra. Or the Agya Chakra has the power to destroy all sins, all the sins in one stroke. That is the power it has. There is a beautiful prayer. Drutam Mincha Uddamareshwara Agya Bhayati Swa. Udisa Tantra. That is the prayer that is given. Lord, open that third eye and in one stroke finish it. Beautiful, you know. Hum Bija. Hum Bija is the Shiva Bija. Why is it so auspicious? Because it is one of the petals in the third eye. The other side is Sham, which destroys everything. Sham. And you put them together, Ham, Sham.